I'm afraid I've got a few quotes and I've got to correct a former speaker. He said, I think, seven years or 77 years that we've been fighting cuts. I've got a quote from 95 years ago. It's from the leader of the Labour Party then, Ramsay MacDonald. And he was talking about the massive cuts that were affecting poor communities at that time. And he said, public dole, that's benefits, popularism, strike for increased wages, all mislead. That's not socialism. Well, what a depressing thing that we're hearing the same arguments at nearly a hundred years on. In the sixth, the world's sixth biggest economy, we can't afford to feed people. Millions are using food banks and the millionaires from G4S, Virgin and all the others are lining up to take over our public services. Landlords, letting agencies, property speculators are raking in millions and people are living on the streets. There's no hostels for the homeless. In Bristol, the cuts are again hitting public sector jobs, the elderly, the disabled, children, the poor, and women, because it's women who pick up the, the, the price of the cuts. They're the ones that fill the gaps in the social care services fail, and they're the ones that are hit hardest by the cuts. The executive officer of Birmingham Labour Council has reported adult social care is now restricted to substantial and critical needs. Youth services are all but gone. Help is now only available to the super deprived. The super deprived, that's the executive officer of a Labour Council. And some measures by Labour Councils make no sense at all. Uh, for example, in South Tyneside, homeless people accepting food or drink on the street will be fined £100 or face prison. What a nonsense, what a nonsense that's Sheffield Labour Council have paid two billion pounds to a multi multinational company for street maintenance. And how are they maintaining the streets? They're cutting down all the trees because they might damage the pavements and they might have to sweep up the leaves. A Labour councillor complained about the protesters. He said, I would have preferred it if they had walked away. Well, we are not walking away. We are demanding that Labour Council stand up and do something. The poll tax campaigners humiliated Maggie Thatcher and they took up the demand, uh, the, the motto of the popular councillors that Ramsay MacDonald was referring to. Better to, to break the law than break the poor. No one is asking Labour councillors to go to prison. No one is asking Labour councillors to pay the price. They've done that in the past. 33 Labour councillors went to prison in Poplar. Liverpool councillors, Craig Cross councillors, Labour councillors of the past, they paid the price. But no one's asking them to do that. All we're asking them is to fulfil the promise that Jeremy Corbyn made in two Labour leadership elections to fight the Tories, fight inequality and fight the cuts. So we have to nail two lies. The first one is a no cuts budget is illegal. It is not. And the other one is that there is no alternative. There are plenty of alternatives. No council will be taken over by Westminster for refusing to pass on government cuts for using reserves, for using prudential borrowing, or working together with other councils to pull reserves and combine services. Labour councils control £32.7 billion. They have billions more in housing revenue accounts, general fund and capital receipt reserves. <clears throat> These could be used. Not, that doesn't even include the London boroughs that also have reserves. Under the Localism Act, Councils have a power of comp competence and they can do anything apart from that which is prohibited. Using reserves is not prohibited. They might say, well that money is being kept for a rainy day or for an emergency. It's not raining today, but we do have an emergency. So we are calling on the Bristol councillors and Labour councils everywhere to fight to get to stand together, to stand together with the unions, with the anti-cuts campaigners and the communities to stop the devastation of public services. Because public service cuts are not just 
a, a, an item on the budget sheet. These are real cuts that affect people's lives. The sweetheart deal that they've recently concluded with Surrey County Council shows what goes on behind the scenes. The fact is that the cuts to Labour councils are five times higher than the cuts to Tory councils. They're on a beating to nothing unless they fight back. They are not going to win the votes of Labour, uh, of Labour voters of the past who are losing their jobs and their services. They're not going to look to win council seats and, and win elections if they don't show that they mean business. Because that's what it's about. It's about making business for the capitalists while we have to see, uh, bear the brunt of cuts. It, it, they say they have difficult choices to make. It's a difficult choice when you have to decide, do I pay for heating or do I pay the council tax? It's a difficult choice when you're in a, a, a domestic violence situation where you've got nowhere to go and nowhere to turn to. It's a difficult choice if you're sleeping rough and getting fined for doing so. They're the difficult choices. And unions across the country, they haven't turned up in great numbers today, but they are saying enough is enough. Unison and Unite Local Government Branches, the Unite Sectors, uh, the Unite Health uh, Section, the GMB Annual Conference and the Welsh TUC have all called on Labour councils for, to implement legal no-cuts budgets. And that's what we want. Now obviously we know that is a short-term measure. It's a short-term measure that will stop the cuts, give them an opportunity to say to their council workers, we are standing with you, not against you. We will stand with the communities and we will unite across the country to fight this government and demand what is, that, demand what is ours. If Surrey County Council can push the government into giving them extra money, why on earth aren't Labour councillors doing that instead of giving us all the old arguments? We are in an emergency. The suffragette and socialist Minnie Lansby, who along with 33 other councillors was imprisoned, she contracted pneumonia and died a few months later. Her father-in-law said, with all her gifts and talents, one thought dominated her whole being night and day. How should we help the poor, the weak, the fallen, the weary and heavy laden to help themselves? No charity there. How can we help them to help themselves? And we are demanding that our councillors do the same. And if they're not going to do the same, then they should stand aside and let others do it for them. We need mass protests. Mass protests and other Labour councillors in 1922 got those councillors out of prison. They showed resolve. They showed a, showed a loyalty to their class. And that is what we expect of Labour councils now. Poplar, Claycross, Lambeth and Liverpool, they showed the way as well. And we have to do that. We cannot wait until 2020 in the hope that a Labour government is going to change everything when Labour councils have changed absolutely nothing. By 2020, nothing will be left. We must fight now. Woo!